Hey folks, it's Andrew Kilpatrick here, and today I'd like to talk about the clock and system menus in Carbon. The clock button itself has two modes. By pressing the clock button normally, it will take you into the clock menu where you can set a number of different functions. And if you hold down shift while you press the clock button, you can tap a tempo which will set the internal clock to a specific tempo. Let's go through the clock menu in detail. To enter the clock menu, press the clock button. The first option is called Step Length. This has to do with each particular track. You can select the track that you want to edit. And then the step length will show how long the each step is in relation to the master clock. So we have track 1 currently running in 8th notes, track 2 is running in 16th notes, and so on. The other functions are global to the song that you have currently loaded. So for instance, the metronome function shows whether the metronome is on or off and where the output from the metronome will go. So metronome off means there is no metronome when you're recording. Internal means it will use the internal beeper. There's a speaker mounted in the bottom that generates a tone. You can send a pulse out of the CV reset jack if you want to control an analog synthesizer or analog drum module or something like that. And then you can also send out track 6, and you can choose the note number that you want to use on track 6. So for instance, let's say track 6 is set to control a drum machine. You can use one of the drum voices on your drum machine, like a rim shot or a hi-hat or something, uh, as your metronome sound. The metronome length is used for the internal metronome to set the length of the beep. Um, because the internal metronome doesn't have a volume control, Using the length allows you to make the apparent volume higher or lower. The clock out functions select the output for MIDI clock from the sequencer itself. So no matter whether it's synch synchronized to an external clock source or using the internal clock source, you can always send out the clock that Carbon has internally. So for instance on DIN 1, it's currently set to off, you can select different speeds in pulses per quarter note um, from off one pulse per quarter note all the way up to the MIDI standard which is 24 pulses per quarter note. For MIDI devices you should usually use 24 pulses per quarter note but you can send a slower clock if you want for special effects or if you have a device that you want to, to run at half time or, or for some other reason. Same for MIDI DIN 2 the CV gate output, this is really where the divisor uh, function is most useful because if you have, let's say, say, an analog step sequencer and you want it to take one step per beat or four steps per beat to make uh, 16th notes, then you can set the speed like that. You can also send MIDI clock to the USB host or device ports. And the MIDI clock source affects the source of a MIDI clock in the system. So for instance, int means internal. That means that it will use the internal clock when running the sequencer, or you can synchronize to an external clock either from the DIN input, from the USB host, or from the USB device port. Normally you would use the USB device port if you want to synchronize to a computer. A DAW software usually works best if it's the source of the clock because of various buffering inside a PC and so on. So if you want to synchronize between Carbon and a computer, I would recommend that you use Carbon as a slave. It has a really tight internal clock that can synchronize with a computer pretty well. Um, but if you use the computer as the master, the computer itself, especially if it's playing back audio tracks, will work much better. And that's all there is to it for the clock menu. To access the system menu, hold down Shift and press the Sys button. This will bring up the system menu where you can see the current firmware version. And you can also adjust the CV gate pairs, which we did in another video. The CV bend range, which affects how pitch bends work for the CV controls. We can set up some other things about the CV output mode, A, B, C, and D. And then we can get to some other system settings that are useful uh, for mostly for the CV uh, outputs. 
we can adjust either one volt per octave or 1.2 volts per octave. We can set the CV span. So this is used if the CV output is not exactly one volt per octave or your oscillators don't track quite right, then you can adjust this plus or minus and this will affect the calibration of the output. You can also out offset the CV output. So for instance, if your oscillator responds to the wrong pitch, you can raise or lower the output. And then you can adjust the timeout of menus. So uh, some people like different things. Some people like menus to disappear automatically. Other people want the menu to stay there until they decide that they want it to go away. Um, so you can either choose a timeout time. So for instance, let me give you an example. If we set this to five seconds and just wait five seconds, you'll see that the menu will disappear automatically. If we go back in, we can set it to some other time up to a minute, or we can set it to shift exit. And that's the mode that I prefer, where you double tap the shift key to exit any menu. And that's really all there is to the system menu. Thanks for watching.